What's up guys, it's Wolf of the Quarantine, and today I have kind of a, a different style review for you. I'm going to be reviewing both of the Escape the Room games from ThinkFun. Now, before anybody says anything, these will be spoiler-free reviews. So that way you can go ahead and continue, and I'll kind of touch on that a little bit later. But, because these games would be very heavy with spoilers, I'm actually not going to have any kind of, um like let's see how the game's played kind of thing because that'll spoil big parts of the game. So instead, uh, I may put a couple pictures up that, will, that won't have any spoilers in it and just kind of talk about the game and then kind of give my overall final thoughts at the end. So let's dive straight into that. If you're unfamiliar with what an escape room is, an escape room is a recent thing that's starting to become pretty popular where usually a group of people are locked into a room and given a certain set of rules and then they have to solve a series of puzzles that usually lead into more puzzles and lead into more and you use all the information that's always available to you to try to eventually solve a final puzzle and they're usually very thematic and then you're trying to get out of the room. That, that's really the gist of it. Now, I haven't done an actual escape room myself. Where I live, I think there's two. One's like two hours away, another one uh, I think is actually not too far from where I'm at now. I just never got around to actually doing one. So these are actually my entrance into escape rooms. Now, these games run about 20 bucks on Amazon. I think they're like 20, 22 dollars, something like that. Now, with these, you're gonna open up the box and everything is sealed. Now, I've actually resealed the box here, and I'll kind of touch on that a little bit later, so that's why I'm not going to be showing any of the actual components to any of the games, because they're very heavy in spoilers. However, when you open the box, I'm going to have a little picture here, but it shouldn't, be, it shouldn't have any spoilers on it, and it shows what all is going to come in the box. So you're going to be getting a little uh, bound uh, cardboard thing that has a bunch of like envelopes in it that look pretty thick because they're full of stuff. You're going to take that, you're not going to break that seal, you're just going to set them down in the middle of the table. You're going to take uh, the rule book out, and it's going to specifically state at the top of the thing, do not open anything in the box. So you're going to pull that out and set it in front of you, and you're just going to kind of pull everything out and separate it. One of the big things you're going to notice is there's going to be a disc, and the disc has a whole bunch of colors all over it, a whole bunch of symbols. And I'm not going to go into too much detail, but the way that works is you're going to use that and it's going to tell you whether or not the puzzles you're solving are correct before you move on. That way you don't uh, screw up and, and think you solved the puzzle and move on and find out you really didn't actually solve it. And in these escape rooms, the every bit of information is always available. So something you used immediately that you used in the beginning of the game, maybe used at the end of the game or maybe used multiple times throughout the game. So you, you always have to look at everything the pictures, the colors, what the writing, the words, everything. And so you're going to use all that and you're going to, uh, before you even get that far, you're going to open up the rule book and it's going to tell you, you know, what an escape room is, things you can do to kind of set the mood, and it's going to kind of walk you through. And it's only like, I don't know, three pages long, something like that. They're pretty, it's pretty small. And it's going to guide you through all that and it's going to show you uh, an example of how to use the, the puzzle wheel so you can make sure that you're solving the puzzles correctly. And then it's going to tell you, go ahead at the end, it's going to say go ahead and read the scene card one. So you're going to read through the scene card one, it's going to kind of have a thematic why you guys are doing what you're doing. And then it's going to have tell you to set the timer. And now the timer is going to be set to either two hours or an hour and a half based on the number of players you're playing with and it's going to tell you start the timer. So you're going to start that and then boom, you guys are timed. But then the game is going to kind of hold your hand and walk you through usually the first very easy, simple puzzle. That way it kind of eases you in because you don't play the game and then you know teach friends how to play it. You all learn how to play through the course of the game. And you just use normal logic and deduction and reasoning trying to solve little puzzles. And then at the bottom of it, it has, uh, if you run out of time, open this. And so you cut it open, you break the seal, and then deal with whatever is down there. And then the, you just go ahead and play the game. And that's, the game makes sense. I don't want to really reveal how any of it works, but all of it makes a lot of sense. You know, okay, well, this holds your hand and says, okay, well, look at this. 
this, this, and this, don't do this. And you're like, okay, that makes sense. And then you use that, solve a puzzle, it usually opens up an envelope and then spills a whole bunch of things out of the table. And then now you look at all that and go, oh, wait, wait a minute, because this kind of looks like this. Maybe if we do this and you just kind of start naturally moving from puzzle to puzzle because you see something, you go, wait a minute, I wonder if that works over on this envelope and you kind of start putting things together and solving things and you go, okay, I think I got it. And you start fiddling with that puzzle wheel and you go, oh, that is right. Let's open this now and so on and so forth. And you slowly start resolving these puzzles. And then in each, each time you solve a puzzle, well, most times you solve a puzzle, you get a scene card. And now the rules tell you as soon as a scene card comes out, somebody needs to read that to give, you know, the precedence of, or not the precedence, the, uh, the scene, I guess is the best word, for what's going on, what happened when you did this. You know, you pulled this off the wall, okay, this is the scene card, this is what happened when you did that. So now maybe that gives you clues to how to do the next puzzle or so on and so forth. So that's basically how the game works. You're gonna go all the way through it, you're gonna follow the story and all the puzzles, and you're gonna make sure your puzzles are right using that wheel. And then once you get to the final thing, you're usually given a choice. And it's kind of a little touch of a multiple choice and it's going to give you a few decisions. And depending on what you do, affects the outcome of the game. So you have these little flaps that you can open depending on what choice you do. And it's going to give you the requirements for your new choice. And then you're going to have to deal with that. And then you're just going to get all the way through. And that's how the game's played. So I guess I'm just going to dive right into final thoughts because, again, these are kind of an odd thing to be able to review with my normal format. So, as my final thoughts, I absolutely love these. These were awesome games. However, this one, not this one, this one here is probably the easiest of the two. So if you're unsure, pick this one up first. Uh, we played it with four players and it was kind of easy. Uh, we played, the four players we played with, one of the people who played were just kind of like, I don't feel like I did a whole lot. So if you do it, make sure everybody's involved. You're going to want to go, oh, wait a minute, I have it. And you're going to grab stuff from people and try to put things together. You're going to start trying to hog pieces and trying to piece things together and whatnot. But just make sure that everybody's, you're getting everybody involved. It got to the point where we're like, okay, here, you try this while, we, while I look at this. That way, you know, everybody feels like they're contributing something to it. But overall, this one... The Mystery at the Stargazer's Manor. This one is pretty simple. Uh, I don't recommend playing this one with more than like three players. But, this one, we played with five players. And I was a little hesitant at first to play it with five players. Because, you know, we'd already played this one. I did this first. And we did it with four. And it was pretty easy. So, we did this with five. And I was like, eh, it'll still be fun. You know, it, they're still, it's still a fun experience. Even if they are very easy. And so we did this one, we did it with five, and we almost lost, big time. I, morally, I feel we did technically lose, because one of the puzzles was so complicated, we couldn't figure it out, and one of the players thought they figured it out, and I went to go check to see if that is how you're supposed to do it, and it wasn't, but then of course I now knew the solution, so I wound up solving it. So. Because the, the way he solved it, I don't want to give spoilers, but the way they wound up solving it didn't seem like that's how it was supposed to be solved. Because it just, you know, it just didn't feel right. But we, nobody could. We were sitting there for like 20 minutes trying to figure this one stupid puzzle out. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to check it and we'll see it that way. But then, like I said, I wound up now knowing the solution. So morally, we did lose. But... Even doing, pardon me, even doing that, we still almost lost. And so the, the Dr. Gravely's retreat was actually very difficult. But both are, were fantastic games. They were very tense. They felt very thematic. And everybody's like staring at the table. And there's always going to be a point where people are staring at the table going, this doesn't make any sense. And then you get that one person that goes, oh, wait a minute, I have an idea. And you, they start grabbing things and putting things together. And my wife was actually playing in this one, actually. And one of the puzzles, nobody could figure out what the heck it was. We were all grabbing different things and putting things together and just sitting at the table. And my wife just went um, out of the blue, just, um, I think I have it. And 
she did. And we were all just like, how did you come to that conclusion? And she's like, it was really weird and kind of complicated, but this is how. And we were all just like, I never would have thought of that. So a lot of the puzzles are like that. You have, uh, in this one, a lot of the puzzles, you're sitting there fiddling with one and then uh, another person may be watching you and they go, wait a minute, I think I got it. So they'll take it and work off of what you did and then that kind of evolves information and then maybe that first person or somebody else goes, oh no, okay, I think I, I, think I got it now. So they'll take it back and you're kind of building on top of each other's information to try to get these puzzles solved. And that's really how they all work and they're fantastic games. So if I had to, like I definitely recommend them. If you get the spare 20 bucks, go out and pick one of these up. You'll probably fall in love with them. I am actually, they've found a, a couple other board game Escape the Room games, I'm actually probably going to pick up because of these. So there are a couple negatives to the game though. Uh, the first one being is, like I mentioned, this one especially is pretty simple. Uh, they, we never had, uh, there was never a point where we felt that we were not, that we were running out of time. But this one, definitely. Like I think we finished with like 10 minutes to spare. But the mystery of the Stargazer's Manor was pretty simple. I think we still finished with like an hour's time left. It was it was ridiculous how much time we wound up having left. So that would be one complaint. The other thing being is once you play through this, you're never going to play it again because you already know how all the puzzles are solved and that's it. You paid 20 bucks, you can never touch it again. But you can go to their website and if you'll see here, I have them resealed. That you can go to the website. It shows you how to repack everything in the game. That way, I can now take this, and then I can give this to somebody else, and then somebody else gets to enjoy the fun of these escape rooms. Once they're done with it, they can rebox it all, give it to somebody else, and you just kind of keep that train going. Which is interesting because, and I just dropped those, but that's fine. Uh, the interesting thing is, I haven't played any of the legacy games because. I don't like the fact of putting 60 bucks into a game that I'm only going to get to play once. But these, I don't know, maybe because they're 20 bucks instead of like 60 bucks, I don't know, maybe it lessened the blow a little bit, but I don't know. These definitely showed me that maybe I should give Legacy Games a shot for that reason, because these were a lot of fun and, you know, the fact that I could repack it and give it to somebody else is also an added benefit, which, of course, you can't do with the Legacy game. But, um, I know that's kind of all the place. I didn't really know how to do these, and I'm actually going to be giving these to a friend of mine soon. That's why I figured I'd go ahead and review them now. Um, but yeah, fantastic games. Go ahead and pick them up, and you know maybe you can get give them to a friend for ten dollars. That way you you lessen the blow or something. So I definitely recommend them. They're great games. So that is my review for Escape the Room. Doc, secret of Doc. Bleh, can't talk today. Escape the Room, Secrets of Dr. Gravely's Retreat, and Mystery at the Stargazer's Map. Anyways, if you like my channel, i got a Patreon up here. Uh, any little bit of support helps. If you uh, would give me a like, comment, and subscribe down below. I will also have in the description my Twitter and my Twitch as well. And I will see you guys next time in the quarantine.